The comments are shameful and cringeworthy. The words are disgusting, devastating, and embarrassing. It's the kind of locker room and frat house talk that personally infuriates me. But guess what? I still, without a doubt, support Donald Trump. Look, you've got two options. A guy who admits he has a past, who spent his life building an empire in the rough and tumble world of real estate, entertainment, and television, both for and with his family, whose life direction wasn't about angling to get to the White House, or a double talking woman who hides the truth, lies about virtually everything, can't figure out what she did with six billion State Department dollars, and when confronted with the unassailable truth, arrogantly responds, don't believe your lying eyes. Now, I told you last week that this election is between someone who is politically incorrect and someone who is politically corrupt. And I said that there's a difference between words and action. Trump's words are horrific, but Hillary's actions have put our, our national security and our safety in jeopardy. Her State Department policy and decisions have created a vacuum where men and uh, the men in Benghazi were killed because of her refusal to take care of those who were working for the State Department. Now, having a little trouble with the teleprompter here. Now, let me put this in perspective for you. Are you happy with the way things are? Or are you one of the 72% in this country who believe that we're going in the wrong direction? That the country is in decline and that we are in desperate need of change? And by the way, is anyone really so stunned that a flamboyant billionaire who owns casinos is capable of speaking the way Donald Trump did? But he apologized. Most people accepted it. A lot didn't. But in the meantime, America is in a mess. The jobs and the economy are a disaster. ISIS has reached our shores and police are being demeaned and targeted throughout the country. Immigration is out of control. Border Patrol tells us that in August, a record number crossed our border. And 10,000 Syrian refugees were brought into this country. Syrian refugees about whom we know nothing. Syrian refugees big enough to create their own town. Even Bill Clinton is tired of the con. You've got this crazy system where all of a sudden 25 million more people have health care and then the people are out there busting it sometimes 60 hours a week wind up with their premiums doubled and their coverage cut in half. It's the craziest thing in the world. You know, folks, I, we're having a lot of trouble here tonight, so I'm going to go to my first guest, uh, Boris Epstein. All right, Boris, I really I have had an open that I can't seem to uh, get on right. the screen here, but let me ask you this. Sure. The last 24 hours for Donald Trump, very difficult, uh, or is this something that you guys expected would be coming down as part of an October surprise? So we didn't expect it, uh, but we did expect for the Clintons to continue to try to play in the gutter, and it's a typical move, right? They're desperate. They know we're winning because the American people want change. 76% yeah, of Americans she was, but she want was ahead. change. She was ahead two points, you know, which I, I get. It's not It's not enough for her to right. be comfortable. So they, go ahead. So Donald Trump has made a decision. He's staying in the race. Of course. No way he's getting out. There's no way he's getting out. I spoke to him today. He's 100% committed. And this campaign is committed. And here's why. Listen, these were terrible words. I'm a father. I'm a son of a very strong woman, a grandson of a strong woman, a husband of a strong woman. And I didn't like hearing that, just like Ms. Mrs. Trump didn't like hearing it. And But she has accepted his apology, and everyone else needs to as well. And let's move on. That's one of the issues that matter. You spoke about it in your open. Benghazi, Iran, Syria, the failed reset with Russia, China. Look at the whole spectrum of Hillary Clinton's career, just as Secretary of State. Then go beyond that. 
total inconsequential senator. But wait, and but wait, Boris, I know all this stuff. Here's the thing. Women are a segment that Donald Trump needs to get to win this election. Mm -hmm. This is, I guarantee you, is, is, is something that's going to hurt him. It's, listen, it's going to hurt. So for, how does he bit. make up for you it? You have 30 days. You make up for it by talking about the issues that matter. Do, do women matter about some some things said, some really comments that are disappointing, but you know, banter from the from 11 years ago? Or do they care about keeping their children safe? And what they care about is keeping their children safe. I know that for a fact. They okay. care about being safe. They care about jobs. And listen, the Clintons don't have a leg to stand on here, right? We all know about their background. And I'm not even going to wade into their marriage. We all know about it. We all know about the women. Well, it's not but, so much about, about the, the marriage. The I mean, it's about her, her treatment of the right. women in the marriage. But, but how is Donald going to handle this tomorrow night? He's going to be strong on it. He's going to be strong on how? the whole. Right off the bat? I'm expecting again, and I'm, you know, we as a campaign are concentrated on the issues that everyday Americans care about, right? Just look at NAFTA, 700,000 jobs lost. Look at the immigration crisis, 10,000 Syrian refugees just in the last 12, 12 months. Look at everything that's gone on in this country. It's less safe now than it was eight years ago. 70% of people believe that. So having said that, listen, the Clintons have started this discussion. They've started, they've waited into, waited into it. So if the opportunity comes up, is Donald Trump going to okay. address how she's treated women, how she's smeared them and bullied them throughout her career? All right, let of me course. ask you this. This was timed. We all knew WikiLeaks was right. coming out. Yeah. This conversation that Donald Trump had with Billy Bush was 11 years 11 ago. 11 years ago. Now, there are those who were whispering about this a few days ago. Did Hillary Clinton wait until the WikiLeaks came out to make a decision to leak this stuff, and if more WikiLeaks is coming out, as Julian Assange right. is promising, can we expect that there'll be more anti-Trump comments coming out? Listen, in 30 days, I assume the, the dirty Clinton politics will try to use everything they can against us because they don't want real change. They represent the Washington elite from both the Democrat and the Republican side. And let me tell you something. In my experience, I don't have respect for those that run for the hills whenever there's a sign of trouble. Yeah, and what about those Republicans? What about Paul Ryan? I mean, what about, and I think we have a list of all of those Republicans, you know, who either once endorsed him or endorsed him and then pulled pulled him back or never endorsed so him. You know, what are they looking to do? They're all American citizens, and it's their right. But what they're doing is they're ignoring the voters. The 14 million Republicans who came out for Donald Trump, the tens of millions coming out now. Do you know what kind of emails and calls we're getting at the campaign? Stay in a Donald. You know, we're not electing a Sunday school teacher. We're electing a president. That's what people care about. That's what they want in their leader. They want somebody who's going to have action, who will do the right thing for this country. And, you know, listen, are the words, again, disappointing? Yes, they are. But is that what people are going to vote on on November 8th? Absolutely not. All right. And and what do you think she's going to do tomorrow night in the debate? I mean, do you think that she teed up that whole Miss Universe knowing that this language was going to be coming out and then made a decision that, yeah, I, it's like a cumulative effect. I'll add that on to what we already uh, know from 20 years ago. Well, she's pretty robotic. We know that she's pretty scripted. So I'm sure she has some very memorized line, just like Tim Kaine did in the VP debate that she'll try to use. But Mr. Trump's ready. He's ready and he's going to come in there and he will show Americans once again why he's the leader we need going forward and not the same old we've had for the last 40 years. And how do you explain to the American people that, you know, Donald Trump clearly wasn't planning on running for this his whole life, so I'm sure there's a lot of language out there. How do you explain to the American people that words are different than actions? How does Donald do that? Well, I think most Americans, as they look at their homes, look at their families, people use salty language, you know, and men will be men and women will be women. And there's salty language across across genders, across but backgrounds. But if that's true, why are so many men horrified by this kind of language? Are they, I mean, I've never been in a men's locker room or, you know, in a frat house. I mean, people say this is what the way they talk. Oh, well, listen, I've been in, you know, I played, I played football in college. You know, there is something to that, but that does not take away from the fact that these comments should not just be excused and go away. And and yep. I do echo uh, what Mrs. Trump said and what Mr. Trump said specifically, where he apologized. And you know what I thought was really great about that statement? When he said, I'm going to be a better man tomorrow. And all of us in this country should want to be better people the next day and concentrate on that and have a, a better day for our country the next day. But all Hillary Clinton cares about is becoming president and then you know maybe getting more money for some sort of pay to play scandal because that's what she's been doing throughout her career. Remember they rented out the Lincoln bedroom, then she rented out the 
State Department. She wants to do the same to the whole White House. Donald Trump will not allow that to happen. All right, Boris Epstein, thanks so much for being thanks here for with us me. in St. Right. Louis. And joining me now is someone with a slightly different take <laughs> on the news in the last 24 hours, Libya, liberal radio talk show host Coco Sudek. All right, Coco, uh, Hello, Judge. language that we don't approve of uh, and certainly language that is going to hurt Donald Trump with women like yourself and other people. But don't you think that this is the kind of language that um, you know, no matter what he says, uh, you'll never forgive him for because it's all about politics. No, I, I think he's an abysmal human being. I think he's an abomination. But let's talk about what you talked about, which is actions matter more than words. So let's put his words aside. This is a man who's been sued for rape, rape of his wife, a business associate, and a 13-year-old kid. No, she and that's a case that's that. winding on, its way Coco, through the Coco, courts. Coco, Coco, he Coco has been I'm going to stop you right there. Three Coco, times. Coco, stop. That's actions, not stop. words. Bill, right. okay. Coco, look, look, there's only one thing that I want to ask you and that is yeah. if I'm asking you a question and you say something that's not factual and I say stop then we got to start all over okay it was a matrimonial she withdrew that but what about the fact that Bill Clinton is someone who actually had to pay eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars for taking something out of his pants and showing it to Paula Jones and then he had an intern semen uh, that his semen was on an intern's dress I mean are you really going to go there we're talking about language versus action actions. I will say that Bill Clinton's peccadillos were very good for Halloween costumes everywhere, but he's not on the ballot. It's that simple. He's not running, and I'm not voting for him. But I'm he voting gets back in the White Hillary House Clinton. if she wins. Right, as the first spouse. Why? But is Melania, look, is Melania's is Melania responsible for Donald Trump's words and actions? Is she responsible for every bad thing well, this guy does? No, she's not. And, and the reason about... Hillary is, is Hillary created a career and a war room to take on the women who criticized her husband. And a woman, Juanita Broderick, who claims that Hil uh, that uh, that uh, uh, Bill Clinton raped her, says that she was threatened by Hillary. So, I mean, they're totally different. We're talking about a, a, a locker room conversation Look, between two is, guys in what, television. This isn't a locker room. This isn't a locker room conversation. Is this it? is a man who boasted. What is it? He boasted about sexually assaulting women. Look, let's put that aside. No. The thing that is really egregious no, no. about Donald Trump, the thing that's really egregious is not his words. You know what it is? It's the fact that this guy is not a patriot. It's the fact that he has no respect for the United States or its laws. He doesn't pay taxes. He doesn't obey the law. He doesn't obey his creditors. Ask you a he, question, Coco. he is Coco, an irresponsible look, human being who should not be anywhere near the White The only candidate here was investigated by the FBI for a year with over 100 agents on her case and a Clinton Foundation of 501c3 that they won't even look at because they've already decided she needs to be president. Don't even go there. You, She's lied to Congress. Really she lied to the American foundations? people over and over again. Trump's what? foundation... Do Trump's foundation oh, isn't oh, yeah. even registered to, to take donations in. Trump's, don Trump's really? foundation... Really? And the Clinton Foundation is? Do you know how many the European Clinton countries are looking at the Clinton Foundation? Well, let's not go the there. The Clinton let's Foundation is a great How is it charity? that Hillary Clinton... How is it that Hillary Clinton and her husband are responsible for 25% of our uranium being sold to Putin, who now owns 25% of the uranium in this country because of his Look, deal through the foundation? You feel good Look, about that, I Coco, too? I mean, I feel a lot better about anything that you're going to say than a guy like Trump, who is beholden to Putin and Putin's oligarchs, who is oh, in the tank for this out. guy because he needs their money. How is no, he been Well, Hillary, Hillary did the reset and sold our uranium to, to, to Russia. Oh, stop that's, it, oh, Coco. That's, that's just craziness. That's the type of talk that you guys have been pushing on the Clintons for years. The thing is, the Clintons must be the greatest criminals in history because you guys have spent billions of dollars investigating them and you've never been able to really find a fact that is incriminating. These are great public servants. You've just made them look like wow. horrible people all these How years. How do you become a, you've a $200 million you've dollar person that when you've got no company, nothing to sell, not even a website, it's all I'll pay tell you to how play, Trump Coco. Did. I, I'll tell you how Trump did Trump it. He inherited did it his with money. Cement and then he, no, no, and no. With he inherited his money. And money. No, right. he inherited everything. All right, Coco, and then, you're never going to vote for it. Donald.
and you're never going to vote for Hillary, but she's going to be your president. We're going to be right like back with Pastor Robert Jeffers, and we'll see what he has to say. All right. Good evening, uh, uh, Pastor. <laughs> how do you, you how do you possibly continue to support Donald Trump after the latest audio leak? Look, make no mistake about it, Judge. His comments were crude, they were offensive, and they are indefensible, but they're still not enough to make me vote for Hillary Clinton. I mean, we need to put this in perspective. Last week, I was at Trump Tower, and I moderated a meeting between Mr. Trump and religious leaders. And while he was seated to my left, I said, look, I would probably not choose Trump to be a Sunday school teacher in my church, but that's not what this is, election is about. We are looking for a leader who can reverse the downward death spiral this nation is in. And I still believe Donald Trump is the best person to do that in spite of the comments, yes, awful comments, he made 11 years ago. And by the way, for which he has apologized. Let me ask you this, Pastor. You know, I suspect, uh, you know, when they talk about this a lot in presidential elections, you know, this is some October surprise. Uh, mm -hmm. But I suspect there that there may be other comments that are going to be leaked as as WikiLeaks, and this is just my conclusion, as the WikiLeaks continue to pour out. Julian Assange says we've got even more WikiLeaks, which I'll talk about a little later in the show. But um, what do you say to other evangelicals? I mean, you mm -hmm. may feel that, you know, Donald is the best person to run the country, but what yeah. about those evangelicals, uh, you know, who've never talked like this or heard these kinds of words? Well, I don't talk like that, but we all are sinners. Everybody's a sinner, the Bible says. We all know, need God's forgiveness, and God is able to forgive anyone who asks. But I am, Judge, having a lot of conversations right now with evangelical leaders, and they say, well, Robert, what about character? Doesn't character count? And I say, of course it does. But you're presupposing Hillary Clinton has a superior character to Donald Trump? Here is a woman, Judge, who has deleted 33,000 emails. She has attacked the women who were sexually assaulted by her husband, and she supports the dismembering of babies in the womb through partial birth abortion. That is hardly sterling character. To me, that is the height of immorality. What, what do you think that Donald Trump needs to do tomorrow night at this debate? And, you know, how can he overcome, you know, this issue with those who are so offended that they don't even want to vote? Look, I think he needs to, most of all, and first of all, show genuine contrition and say what he did last night, Judge. He said, this is not the man I am. And by the way, I can testify to that. I've been around him the last year in a number of situations with his family. I've watched him interact with Melania and the children. My wife and I have been with him on several occasions. He is nothing except respectful toward women and toward others. The Donald Trump I know today is not the Donald Trump that was in those 11 years ago. And I think he needs to keep saying what he did last night. I'm a changed person. And as your president, I will never do anything to embarrass you. Um, and, and Pastor Hillary Clinton, uh, if she continues to, you know, uh, paint Donald Trump as this kind of person, and I believe that 20, uh, that the debate last week and the reference to Machado was just the tee up for this, so it would look like a cumulative thing. Um, do you think that she continues to do this kind of thing, and can she turn evangelicals around? She will never turn the majority of evangelicals toward her. Donald Trump is the only pro-life, pro-religious liberty, pro-conservative justices to the Supreme Court candidate that we have. And by the way, that's what this election is about for conservative Christians, Judge. It's about the Supreme Court. The next president will select or nominate two or three justices who will shape this nation for generations. And we need justices who will interpret the law using the Constitution and not political correctness. And I just remind my conservative friends, don't lose focus about what this election is about. It's about the Supreme Court and the future of our country.
All right, uh, Pastor Robert Jeffries, thanks so much for being with us. Well, and clearly, you know, one of the things that was so kind of submerged in all of this latest tabloid stuff is the fact that WikiLeaks, where Hillary Clinton talks about the fact that she says one thing in private and one thing in public, and that she needs Wall Street to oversee and reform Wall Street, you know, as if we need the fox overlooking the hen house. And, you know, all kinds of things that the public is ignoring. Is it because they just think she's a liar and they know it? Yeah, they already know she's a pathological liar who is self-surfing. So it's not new information to them, just as uh, it's not new information to people that Donald Trump has made rude and inappropriate and, and grotesque comments in the past. That's not new information. What voters are looking for is information to decide their vote on the issues that they care about. All right, so why are the Paul Ryans of the world and, and, and Jason Chaffetz uh, and a lot of these, we had a screen with all of the, the senators, you know, Kelly Io, that that's no surprise and McCain that's no surprise a lot of them establishment people who never liked them in the first place I mean aren't they hurting their own party or are they being smart by trying to separate from well them? time will tell on that but here's what I can tell you the Republican National Committee is still behind them the RNC I was talking to officials right before we came on the air uh, all the plans they had for turning out Republican voters to help our entire ticket they're still doing so that so that this rumor that we're hearing that the RNC is pulling back on Donald Trump and, and, and raising money or supporting him. That's not true. Well, judge, uh, rumors happen in politics. <laughs> it doesn't mean they're true. <laughs> what about the fact that, that Hillary Clinton is saying right now that, you know, that Donald Trump uh, cannot be president, that he's this horrific person? I mean, how does she explain to the American people tomorrow night in the debate? And can she convince people that this is a man who's not worthy of being president? Look, Hillary Clinton's not winning any votes at this point. The facts re remain that she has a 30-year track record of lies, deceit, and fraud. The facts remain that she put national security behind her own political expedience when she sent private and, and confidential emails on an unsecure server. The facts remain that she's a serial enabler of a sexual predator, her husband, who has victims that she has just uh, time and time again tried to suppress. I mean, there's a long list from Juanita Broderick to, to uh, you know, uh, Wellstone. So, I mean, you can look this up on the internet. The, the media won't cover this one bit, but there's a, actually a, even a dedicated Wikipedia page on Bill Clinton's victims. So this is well documented, it's cited, and I just cannot understand why people are focusing on Donald Trump's words when Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton's actions are far worse. Well, you know, I think, you know what, Harlan, I think David Avella was very right. He said it's like tabloid politics and it's a tabloid world right now. But but with respect to Bernie Sanders and his supporters, I can't believe that given everything that Bernie said, and Bernie was right about most of it, yeah. uh, that the, the Bernie Sanders supporters, if they were going to stay home, might not now say, you know what, she's worse than even Bernie said she was. You know, she says now that uh, she dreams of a hemispheric global market, open trade, open borders, when she's speaking in a Brazilian, in Brazil, at a Brazilian bank. I mean, she'll say anything to anybody. That's not motivating people, or is it even getting enough attention at, to motivate people? At best, I have to be honest with you, I think that Bernie Sanders supporters will stay home. And that's actually a, a, a positive for Donald Trump. And so with each revelation that comes back and confirms what we know about Hillary Clinton, uh, I, I think that, that that's actually a net positive. Because we know what we're going to get with Hillary Clinton, which is more Obamanomics, which have gutted the middle class, more Obamanomics, which have gutted millennials like myself. We're going to get more taxes, more regulation. We're going to have a nuclear Iran. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And so I don't think that she's going to win any new supporters at this point. But unfortunately, with all of the distractions, I don't think Donald Trump is either. Actor Scott Bayo made big news when he first endorsed Donald Trump on Justice, this show, earlier this year. Since then, Scott and I have been to Trump Tower, where Scott got to meet Donald Trump, his candidate, and he even spoke with the Republican National Convention. Scott Bayo joins me now. Good evening, Scott. Hey, Judge. Always good to be with you. Thanks. Uh, good to have you here. All right. Now, I remember specifically you said that one of the reasons that you supported Donald Trump is because he spoke like a regular guy. <laughs> Do you think what he said or what was yeah. released from 11 years ago is that yeah. kind of stuff? Absolutely. First of all, I think 11 years ago, Trump was a Democrat. So doesn't he deserve a pass? 
<laughs> just throwing that out there. Um, I like Trump because Trump is not a politician. He, he, uh, he talks like a guy. And ladies out there, this is what guys talk about when you're not around. So if you're offended by it, grow up. Okay, and by the way, this is what you guys talk about over white wine when you have your brunches. So take it easy with I your phony don't, outrage. I don't talk this like is that, the way Scott. the world works. It's not the, a big thing. Yes, yeah, sorry. Go ahead, Judge. Okay, but you know what, Scott? Here's the thing: people aren't what? used to hearing that, having an audio, listening to it. I know. But what shocks me is that I know this is frat house stuff. I know that this is locker room football, locker room talk. But you know, when I hear like senators and congressmen, some of whom have actually played football, saying they're outraged, yeah, we none of us like that language, but they do use it. And I'm not, I'm not defending them in that regard. I think it's horrific. But at the end of the day, this is the kind of thing that is. It's not unusual for guys, but how does Donald Trump convince women that he needs to win this election that he's not a pig? By saying I'm a guy. This is how we talk. Listen, you could you could not like the way I talk when I'm with my buddies, but you better like the way I'm going to fix stuff because my opponent is going to wreck the country open borders, says one thing to banks and speeches, says other things to the, to the country. I mean, lies about everything. She's, I don't know what else to say about this woman. She defends her husband who was allegedly abusing women for, I don't even know how long, a quarter of a century. And then, um, and then she tries to destroy those women, calling them bimbos. So, you know, what do we want here? What, 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 if, if you're gonna accept that, that she's defending her husband and going after these bimbos that she calls them, then you're going to have to accept Trump for being a guy. Okay. You know, I get the feeling, Scott, that she may feel badly that she lost your vote. And I want you to listen <laughs> to this sound for a minute. <laughs> Any regrets over losing the Scott Bayo vote? Not a one. So it wasn't heartbreaking that, that no. yeah, but Chachi, I mean, who's going to be next? You know what, Scott, I got to tell you, when I heard that, I, I was delighted. I said to myself, you know what? I think that one stung. What do you think? Oh, I thought it was very funny, although um, I'm a little concerned that I'm on, I'm on the uh, Clinton radar screen because um, people that disagree with her happen, you know, tend to disappear. <laughs> disappear well you know what I, that probably makes at least two of us here but right. you know what this is really about standing up and saying what it is that you believe in what do you want to hear donald trump say tomorrow night well, well i know it's going to happen i know that it's going to be it's going to be three against one uh so i think he's you know first of all i everybody is redeemable except trump and paul ryan in my in my opinion is a punk he's always been a punk and he was just looking for a way out he's a punk um, but tomorrow night, they're going to say, hey, Mr. Trump, remember when you killed that person on Fifth Avenue with a bazooka? And he should say, yeah, right. Okay, listen, here's how I'm going to fix the economy. Remember when you smacked your mother in the mouth 50 times when you were a little boy? Right. That's what I did, too. Okay, here's what I'm going to do about the border. And remember when you did, it, it's going to be, and, and Hillary, who makes your pantsuits? So I, I think that he's going to have to be prepared for this barrage of, of uh, I, I don't even know what the word is, hate or, or attack, and just deflect it and go right to what he wants to talk about because they they don't want to talk about issues, Judge. They lose when they talk about issues. Right. She's never talked about what she's going to do other than getting more intelligence to fight ISIS. Anyway, Scott Payo, thanks so much for being with us tonight. Thanks, Judge. Always good to see you.